that Brother Bud, we called him, went on to be with the Lord. It's left up to me and you down here on this earth. We ought to get jealous of him. I'm jealous of my mom, jealous of my dad, but there's no jealousy in the Lord. I'm going there one day. Yeah. Now, we're, we're stuck down in here and have to fight the good fight of faith like they did. My dad, when he passed away, um, he was evangelist. Started off as a pastor and he went into evangelism. He worked full time all his life and evangelized. And I've been around a lot of churches, been in a lot of places. That Victory in Jesus song, I remember kicking sawdust while it was playing up under tents during evangelist when he was evangelizing. <clears throat> we uh, went around. He always prayed and made sure the Lord wanted him to come there. He just didn't tell everybody he was evangelist like I don't tell everybody I'm a pastor. I just live it. They asked me, you must be a pastor or something, yeah? I just live it. Yeah, I don't have to advertise. Your advertisement is how you live. Your advertisement is how you live. A boss, a leader, advertise how he leads. A boss. You don't have to advertise that I'm a boss here. That don't mean nothing to me. I guess that's why I intimidate a lot of bosses. I respect you as being a boss. I respect you as being a leader. But you lead as an example. You don't cuss people out. You ain't got to have to tell people how dumb they are and sorry they are. There's a way to fire somebody in righteousness. The right way. That's true leaders. That's true bosses. That's true CEOs in the companies. As it would be fathers. I remember going to a bunch of black churches, African Americans churches, Hispanic churches. Boy, if I could get four or five of them up in here, we could show y'all how to church. They don't sit around. Now, understand, you can jump and holler and shout don't mean a hill of beans. I've been around them, and when they jump and shout and just want to put on a show and let people know they can shout louder than the other one. But I have been around people that is really, really thankful for being free and really thankful to the living God that he's the Abba Father of all. I have been around, when you have been in the dumps long enough, and the father of fathers come and get you and relieve you. You don't, you can't keep still. You can't keep from raising your hand. You can't say how good he, keep from saying how good he is. You can't keep your mouth shut. Because you know where you was. You know where you've been. And that's where I, I, God allowed my daddy to go at the African American churches and black churches, they know they have been pressed down, pushed down for many years. And they know, Jack, when the Holy Father get a hold of them, they didn't have air conditions while you had air conditions, some of you. And they know when they got some of that good crisp air, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, praise God. That's a lot of difference when you know that where you came from and you're so thankful that you have a father that knows the best for you to lead you out or to save you or to give you advice. We're here to thinking about fathers, our earthly fathers here today, but I'm here to tell you I might be my children's earthly father, but I point him to the father of fathers. I tell them, 
If it wasn't for that father, you, may, you could, wouldn't have a father. So look at that father. That father is the father you need to follow. Amen. That'll never leave you. Not a, not never, that will never let you down and never will let you, let a, never, for he will never make a mistake. And as I raised my children as trying to be the best father that I possibly can here, I made a lot of mistakes, a lot of errors. They have seen their father as an example of saying, I have to say, I'm sorry. I have to say, forgive me. Instead of being a father that rules and reigns and that's all the way it is, I'll never make a mistake. I'm going to give you eight examples in the Bible how a father should be. There's nothing, there's nothing easy about being a father. Nothing. And let me tell you something. I can't, you know. That's why we get people get selfish in them here. I just could go by America because that's where I'm from and it's where I'm brought up. But there's so much selfishness here in America that I just can't comprehend some of the things, but God only knows. But they think if they can't have a child, they ain't a father. You could be a father to your co-workers. That's a younger than you are. Y'all didn't hear that. There's a way to be a father without having sex and saying, I got that one. A father ain't having sex. A daddy ain't having a baby. A father is a father. It ain't easy being a father, especially now these, these nowadays. A lot of divorces. A lot of this and a lot of that. But that doesn't mean you can't be the father God called you to be. Oh, I'm fixing to get down here, Lord. You might have left your wife or she might have left you. It doesn't mean not for you not to be a father to that child. Fathers has big responsibilities because God created you to be the father, the head of the household. Oh, you ain't married to the one I'm married to. They won't let me be head. No, I'm not saying to be a dictator and overrule them. I'm saying how to, the Lord can teach you how to be a father to lead your family if you are still married. If you're not still married, you can still lead your family, your child. Uh-oh, here we go. You need to respect that woman regardless if you married to her or not. She's the mother of your baby. Baby, you better respect her. I don't care what she did. Oh, hallelujah. I don't care what she did that broke up the family or broke up the relationship or even might have been even you. But you still could be a father of that child. That child didn't ask for you and mama to separate. Y'all did. Right. Amen. Woo. I, I told you fathers, get ready. Then when we had Mother's Day, I, I'm going to get my wife to teach on Mother's Day. When y'all get to see that happen, y'all get ready. Rapture's coming. Hallelujah. <laughs> no. She, she is full of knowledge. She's like I was, timid. She is full of knowledge. She teaches women at work about the gospel. She teaches people that, that she meets other women and relates to them. She teaches me even how to be the better father. When I used to raise my kids up, you don't need to throw a temper tantrum in front of them like that. Wait till you cool down. A lot of times with mom. But we need to understand, regardless of the situations, regardless if even if you made mistakes and wasn't there, 
In the beginning, the day is the day that you could be the father. By God teaching you. There's more. But I'm going to share a few examples that I had to learn. I did not perfect all of these. Believe me. But I learned. If I'm saying that right. I learned as I went. When you have a child, it doesn't come with instructions. It's a person totally different than you are. Have taste different than you do. Like different things that you do. As they grow. So you need to know how to minister to your children or train your children the way God does us because he, he 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 spanks me but he did it took, it took me what honey what i was what 30 40 30 something years old before he really got a hold of me and spanked me so that, well, that's a lot of grace there wasn't it but that but when he got a hold to me he i must have he must have took up for me all the years the day i was born you don't want to get spanked by daddy But the number one thing that I've seen in my life is be your child's first teacher. By loving your child's mother. Oh, there's ways to love it, even though you remarried and stuff like that. There's ways to respect that mother. You may have remarried, but, you know, that's her mother. You don't talk about that mother to that child. Oh, here we go. Getting deep now, ain't it? Regardless of what she did or whatever happened, you don't, oh, here we go. Even goes with grandfathers and grandparents. You do not take a child to try to make a child like you better than the other grandparent or the daddy or whatever it may be by just giving it and letting it do what it wants to do. Ooh, boy, it's getting heavy around here. I tell, I already started my grandchildren off. They may not understand yet, but I told them, I said, you love your other papa, your other mama. Or Papa, Mama, whatever they, however they want to be called. I said, you respect them. They just look, especially Emma. She's getting up in age. She looked at me like, like, what are you talking about? Be your children's first teacher by loving your mother's, your child's mother, and having respect. Do not talk about. Ooh, do not talk about your mother to your children. Regardless of the situation. Proverbs 22 verse 6. Direct your children onto the right path and when they're older they will not leave it. That means every part of life. That's not only telling them about God and the Bible and his word that's in every part of life because if you take the Bible it will help you lead every other part of your life because you need to teach that child how to work how to save every part of life that child has to be taught and the grandchildren has to be taught that's why God's holding father's responsibility, a big responsibility. We depend on the women to do all the teaching. We depend on the women all do all the praying. We depend on the women to go to church, find the word of God, come back and tell me about it. If I like it, if I don't, I ain't going to do nothing about it. 
because I'm macho. Being a father, a true leader, a true teacher is seeking God yourself how to bring your children up the way they should go. By God's word, the best of your ability. And respecting your other companion, regardless if you divorce or not. Because you and her decided to have these children. These children don't want to need to, woo, here, can I go on? They don't need to keep seeing y'all badging one another and they feel like they're the blame. Ephesians 5, verse 28 through 29. And this is why we, because this is why what we're doing, if God tarries, men, we're passing another generation of kids that should be able to understand right from wrong if God tarries and we pass by the grave before God comes and get all of us. To take the torch and take it and take a nation, take whatever it may be, the family, and lead that family or his family the same way. And the, not even the mistakes that I made, you need to want them to be better than you was and have more wisdom than you had in the book of God. Don't take grandpa's 1938 religion up to 2021. If it's religion, it'll kill you. But if it's a relationship, it grows. In the same way, husbands ought to love their wives as they love their own bodies. Understand, there's a lot of separation nowadays. And different things like that, guys. Things happen. But God is trying to show us how we can take another generation and pass the right ingredients, may I say, to that generation so they can take the nations and take positions in lawyers, doctors, presidents, whatever it may be, and do the right thing with the Lord. Love your wives as they... As, as they love their own bodies. For a man who loves his wife actually love shows love for himself. No one hates his own body but feeds and cares for it just as Christ cares for the church. Mm, I can open a can of worms. I'm not going to teach on this today. But that's why God says make sure you try to, your best to get along with one another. If you made your decision to live with one another and made your decision to before God, to stand before God in front of a minister or whoever you want to, because to me, marriage license don't make you married. It's just something to be broken. Some people that live together for years, to me, they married. Ah, uh, but the Bible says, obey the laws of the land. If you want to be recognized by the states you live in, get married. Just as Christ cares for the church. Because Jesus does not divorce us because of your attitude, because of my attitude. And because, ooh, here we go. He don't even divorce you when you go worship other gods. He gets jealous. But in, in the book of Joel, he shows you a picture language how he brings you back. I'm going to teach on that one day. It was a perfect example that how man or woman, even if one of them commit adultery in a relationship, how God can fix that relationship and make it even better. But also God says if he sees it, if he, he allows you to get a divorce if one of the two commit adultery, and I'm going to teach on that, 
I'm going to open a can of worms on this, but he's because why do he sees us letting us have a divorce because one of us committed unfaithful in the marriage? Why, why, why? Because God showed me because it releases more demons inside that relationship that most people can't take. So God says, I'm going to give you a way out. So that's coming in the future. But be your child's first teacher. First example. It's our responsibility, guys, to train our children up the way he or she should go. It's not sitting out there with a Budweiser in your hand and sitting in the club saying, yeah, I got five kids. How many you got? It's not the school's responsibility. It's not even the government's responsibility to raise a child. It's yours. Responsibility. Number two, we need to lead as an example or an illustration of God or illustrate. We need to let our children see us make mistakes and how to own up to our mistakes and see how you allow God to fix the mistakes. They need to see dad, when dad fall, his pride ain't up there saying, I'll never fall. They need to see Dad, you're not perfect. No, son, I'm not. Daughter, I'm not. But I know one who is. Even by teaching them, you can even say, I was wrong. Mine probably testified as after he tore my butt up, he come and apologized. That, it's done, done now, Dad. It's the truth. I made a mistake. Sorry. I, I mean. Second Corinthians 3. Verse, verses 2 through 3. The only ladder of recommendation we need is you yourself. Paul is speaking and saying. The only way people is going to realize you have heard. From me. Or hear from God. Or Say who you are. The only way I really know is by yourself, the way you live. Your lives are a letter written in our hearts. Everyone can read it and recognize our good work among you. Going to church, having a Bible in your hand every time the doors is open doesn't mean you're doing the right thing. Because if you're not going by what that word says and being an example of what the word of God said, you're showing a child that grabbing the Bible, going to church and coming home and slapping mama and dad, mama around and beating them up or beating, yeah, beating the children up or whatever it may be like, oh, that's good God, huh? No. It's wrong example. You got to live this stuff. Because believe me, them children are sitting there watching. Them little grandbabies, I'm able to learn even more from them than when I have raised my own children because I had a constantly, I was gone, working, going, and I'm still working. But I was have to do what I could to provide, blah, 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 just blah, 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 just go, go, go. I'm able to see them on them because they got a mom and daddy that's raising them. I mean, that's why I can see why God says a grandchild is a blessing, ain't it? Because you can really see some of the things as a, grand, uh, as a parent that you miss some of the things that you're own, raising your own children with because you're focused on other things. You are the provider, sure enough, then. Now, there are sometimes grandparents just has falls back onto the grandparents. 
Sometimes it happens that way. Life is, throws all, many kind, all kinds of curveballs, all types of situations. But whatever position you're in, be that person. Just by having a title doesn't mean you are that person. Clearly, you are a letter from Christ showing the results of our ministry among you. This letter is written not in pen and ink, but with the spirit of the living God. It is carved not on tablets of stone, but in your hearts. Men, what you say is what you believe. The way you act is what's in your heart. A couple more in the pens in the coffee can. This is our day to be recognized, but let this, well, yes, God, I will. I felt God says, recognize, they need to be recognized every day. Because that's what I told my children. I appreciate what y'all do and all that and on Father's Day, but the recognition is how you live today where they say other people say whoo they must have had a pretty good upbringing up there that's my ladder to the world then when they go crazy they know I can sit there and say hey they didn't get it from daddy <laughs> I hope so <laughs> my daughter's sitting there Are they perfect? No. I'm not teaching you perfection. I'm teaching you what the word of God taught me and how God taught me. And if you want a better life and if you want another generation to be able to be here to take care of you when you get old, instead of saying, Daddy and Mama, put them in the old folks home, give them a pill, kill them, let's go. Not knowing that they're going to die them, get old themselves. You want a generation that does by the word of God saying, honor thy mother, mother and father. For if you honor your mother and father, you have, I will bless, there's a promise behind it that I will bless you with long life. Good life. So we need to live as an example. Let them see your mistakes, let them see your impurities, and let them see the light of the Lord Jesus Christ inside of you. And to constantly point them to Christ because you, I, you teach them, Daddy can let you down, but I know one can never let you down. I know one that Daddy's only limited so far. Your earthly dad may be limited so far, but I know one can go to the deepest of the deepest. To the lowest of the lowest. I know one that can take and have it all. That got it all. And take care of it all. And for them to seek the father of fathers. Teach them how to read. Teach them how to pray. Woo-wee. <sighs> Number three. We need to learn to provide for our families. It is hard nowadays, especially nowadays, with all the economy that sometimes the way it is. You, I, I, you can work four jobs and still better make it. But there's only so much part of much time in a day that you can work. You got to have a little sleep. It ain't just talking about finances. Providing for the family is showing how much you show love Towards them, towards God, towards the mother of the, of, the, of the children of respect. Like I said, you may be separated or divorced, but just respect. Especially if they're at an age that they're not grown yet. Now, after they're grown, you still need to not talk about each other, but show respect. 
There's I mean, nothing I can say about that. <laughs> but when I'm talking about mostly as a father, is little kids up to 18. And then and, and I'm going about I'm gonna finish this too today, Bobby. How about that? Because it's never over being a dad, anyhow. Need to learn how to provide for the family by teaching the lessons of life to the child. As the child throws a temper tantrum because they ain't got it, doesn't mean you go buy it. I know God's love here. <laughs> Shut up. Thank you. Because they're going to love you until the new rares out and they're going to cuss you out when they get 18. Moving right along. All you, all you follow, all you showing them is, is God Himself. How you got, how God is, how we basically us Christians treat God. Ha 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 ha! Move, Lord. What you need, son? What you need, daughter? Ha, ha, I'm sick. I'm dying. I'll leave it. I, 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 I. Here you go. Bing, 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 bing. Ha! Where you going? I'm going over here to the, with the guys or the boys or the girls or what? What about? When you're coming home, when I need you. Oh, I need some more money. I'm out of gas. You got a job? That's teaching your children how to provide. No? Well, it seems like to me, you better go get one. Well, I don't want my baby to walk like I had to, used to walk to school. You didn't kill you. You, I mean, are you still here? I mean, yes, you want your children better and to prosper, but show them how to prosper the right way. Through Jesus Christ, by giving, loving on the Lord, and then getting out there by the sweat of their brow and working. Well, I'm not going to work at this job. It don't pay enough. Well, guess what? You ain't got nothing now. A dollar and a half is more than you got now. People say dollar and a half. Man, 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 man must be back in 1800. <laughs> well, I don't know. Somebody must need to hear that because it re- I felt the backlash on that one. <laughs> but that's how teaching... And how I provide it for your family is teaching them the lessons of life. There's nothing free, young man, young lady. Nothing, nothing free. You want Papa to give you some gas money? I got some weeds. Come on out here and get them for me. Papa, that oh, got bad. Get them for me. Huh? Hear that, Emma? Hear that, Trenton? Y'all get them weeds up there. Mama! That's right. You better go get your mama to do it. <laughs> Oh, Lord, help me. <laughs> and it's the truth, guys. That's why we got to live examples. And people say, well, I wasn't there a long time. Drop it there. Drop it right there. Quit saying how you was back then. Today, you can make it right. That's right. This could be one of the greatest Father's Day you have. <laughs> greatest Father's Days you ever had to make it right now. Be a father now. Quit worrying about, well, I didn't have it. Mine's done grown. No, they ain't grown yet. It, your job is never over. I'm, I'm getting way ahead of myself. Being a dad, never over. You think Father, Jesus quit being a father when we get to heaven? No, he's still father, ain't he? Praise God, I felt that. He said, go on, boy. That was a good one. That's my son. I oh, Thank you, Dad. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. I really felt that. Being a good dad is discipline your children. It doesn't mean beating them. It doesn't mean grabbing a belt every time they said, I spilt the coffee or whatever happened. Discipline with a gentle spirit, but firm. What do you mean? Your nose is nose and your yes is yes. Puppy eyes. 
you put behind. Grab that puppy eyes. I love you too, baby. One more day, you got to do it, and I'm going to take care of it. You got one more day before you get your phone back. One more day. You're going to ask my children, you know, I guess that's why I kind of, the Lord kind of made me kind of just get by all my life. Meaning, I'm still waiting on more than enough. I mean, I'm not painting a picture up here, folks. So, you know, hey, I'm still waiting on to where I can reach back in, grab it, and do even better in the, in the kingdom of God. But the, I, I wouldn't trade nothing what God allowed me to go through Amen. to teach me where I'm at today. Hallelujah. Yeah. Yeah. I know how to be, as Paul says, I know how to have a little and how to act. I know how to have a lot, meaning I had enough to where I had savings, a little, little bitty savings. When I call savings in my house, $1,000. Boy, I got quiet too. I mean, y'all must got a lot of more savings than I do. I praise God for you. Nothing wrong with that. But to me, $1,000 was savings. Yeah. Glory to God, I just got a saving. Me and my wife got $1,000. Uh, 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 I'm serious. But the Lord allowed me to go through all that with three kids, jobs, both job, two jobs at one time. Me and my wife both have to clean to make it. Condos, still preach. Because I can stand flat footed and say, if I made it, you can make it. You got to make your mind up to keep with staying with this guy called in this Bible called Jesus. Stay with him through hell or high water. You're going to make it. And your kids is going to be brought up the best as you can. But learn how to discipline your children with a gentle spirit, but firm. Proverbs 13, verse 24 says. I think, yeah, Proverbs 13, not 14. Those who spare the rod of discipline hate their children. Those who love their children care enough to discipline. That rod, people take that out of context, that rod does not mean a beating. That rod is firm discipline, meaning being firm. Your yes is yes, your no's is no, honey. Firm. Y'all, can I tell some stories for y'all? Of my children? Is that right, Pastor? Just a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. There's times they always say, man, we can't act up. You always find out. I said, son, it ain't because of me. Or oh, honey, it ain't because of me. It's because I got an all-seeing God. There people, there would be, they would try to do things out of school. I'd be at work. And the co-worker come up there and says, uh, don't you have a so-and-so? I ain't going to call the names. The child, yeah. Well, I heard they was blah, blah, blah. I said, what? I dropped twos and all. What? (laughs) Take care of it. (laughs) Well, sure enough, their discipline this time was enough that you got caught. I didn't have to spank. I didn't have to put on restriction. You know what you did wrong. It was wrong. And it hurt them just that bad as it would me putting them on restriction for a minute. You know. I knew. My, even my wife said, you did good on that one. <laughs> then I have some of them wants to be bowed up and we can tie up, wrestle. Okay. Oh, Michelle. Everybody say, she's like her daddy. That's a problem. (laughs) You want to stay right here until one of them give in.
They all was good. But they wasn't perfect just like dad wasn't perfect. No matter what. But you know what? My ladder is seeing them raising their children the way they should and how they work and be good citizens in the community and work jobs. It ain't free, son. It ain't free, daughter. Let's get it. It ain't there. Let's get it. If you want to be better than what daddy and mama was scraping by, get a better education. Do what you have to do. Go do something that you like that you can prosper in, that God put in your heart. They all working on their second houses. Me and my wife still on our first. And we didn't get ours until we was 38. They had houses at 21. My God couldn't have me a house when I was 21. I, was, I had a, a little trailer. Praise God, I wasn't a house. The world holler, trailer trash. Well, you call me trailer trash all you want to. I wasn't in a tent. Man, I can't. That's why I never could fit in with the world. Really, really couldn't. I wear my shoes, my blue lights, Kmart specials. Why you why wearing your Reeboks and I nah, blow you off the doors? And Reeboks don't make you no faster than blue light specials does. Cause you running for the cops. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus, ready to say? <laughs> you running from the cops? So, <laughs> what are you saying? I'm just saying. Be the best you can by the word of God. <laughs> I don't put a can of worms on that one. <laughs> Be the best by the word of God, but live an example. Be who you are. But be honest with your children. Because when you have that child, your life has changed whether you realize it or not. The world does this, kill them. The world does this. Get rid of them. The world does this. But when you have that child, your life is changed. Your toys is over. Unless you really have the money to buy your toys and take care of your family. God bless you too. I appreciate that too. Nothing wrong with that. But I, I, I didn't even get a pickup truck till my children got grown. Because I couldn't afford one. I had to keep mom in the ride. And I take all the rust in and spray paint it. I'll tell you this story real fast. And everybody talks about it. Even at work, some of my coworkers that knew me back then talk about it. Couldn't afford kids to buy cars all the time. And I used to say, Lord, how in the world are we going to do it with three kids needing a car, going to school, blah, blah, blah. Well, God made a way, always made a way. So I told my son, he, you know, he was the first one. I told my son, I said, here, there's a car. Rust all over it. He looked it. It was my old work car, but you're going to have to let me use it during the week. You still got to catch the bus. But you can fix it up. And I let him fix it up. And, man, you know, he loves them spinners back in the day. And he put on them plastic spinners on my rims. You know, the plastic hubcaps, and they spin. I used to ride into work. They used to look at me. I said, that's my boys. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, but I was letting him be a getting out of here and, you know, feeling his little, going through all his changes, you know. And, hey, I can't get a car right now, but play with that bad boy. Get it. Fix it up. I'm going to put some spenders on it. I don't care. I drive it with the spenders. <laughs> One day I was going to work. And they've been on there for so long, and I stopped. I had to stop at the red light real fast because it changed. And when I stopped, one of them plastic rent, uh, <laughs> things come off. Whoo! Went out there. Didn't go on across the road. But went out there in the median, right in the middle of the red light, four-lane red light there. Spun around and around and around and around. And I, God, my witness, it landed right in the middle. And I'm like, everybody looking at my spindles. Flew off my car. I said, well, Jesus... I went on to work. How you wouldn't catch me dead in that. I ain't walking. And my boy getting his thrill, all right? <laughs> G 
Let daddy do it. He don't mind. He'll ride up there and bless God. I'll drive up there in that smoking bomb. I, listen, folks, this is what I'm trying to tell you. I've tried to provide. I didn't have an air condition for a long time in a car. Sweat. I had people pull up by the red light by me. Co-workers sit up there with me doing this number while their air conditioning on. I'm sitting here taking rags from work, wiping sweat. And they wave at me like, I know they're picking on me, you know. I get, I say, mm. mine was paid for. They were spending the cool this night. Had to provide. So, anyhow, but dis- discipline them. Uh, Proverbs, uh, Psalms 103, verse 8, real fast. Let me try to finish. The Lord. It's compassionate and merciful, slow to anger. My, see, I had, I didn't want my children, I didn't want, don't, don't talk about my children. And I ain't going to give you a reason to talk about my kids because they're going to sit in this chair and they ain't going to move. Because when I go off, I know that, hey, they sitting in the chair, don't talk about them. They ain't sitting up there going in your house, tearing down your house. Get up in the chair, sit down, shut up. Uh Uh-huh. I used to go in places, man, your kids ain't no problem. I said, well, I ain't that problem at the house. Because I always have a problem at the house. They so mad, they so, I mean, they know how to just sit there, and they know how to just, didn't, they didn't go in here and, Try to get this one and get tear that other with toys. They let the other one play with his toy. If he wants to give it, he don't. He didn't worry about going over there and snatching it from him. Because if daddy get down the road, he's going to buy you one one day. Just hold on. It might be after that one is obsolete, but we're going to get a toy like that. <laughs> the Lord is past slow to anger, Phil. But I was more knee-jerk reaction. And that's where I made my mistakes. With my kids. So you gotta be slow. Let's 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 talk this out for a minute and you know what you did, right? I told you if you ever did, you're gonna get a spanking, right? So I gotta stick to it. I used to say, if you do it, you're gonna get spanked. And when they come up on them, bloom! Ah, it's gonna hurt me more than it's gonna hurt you. Yeah, right. <laughs> they used to tell me, you always say that. <laughs> But why my wife can tell you, I go out, I cry. Because I had to stick, be real strict, but yet I, 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 I had to battle with my flesh and cry. I didn't want to do that. But praise be to God. They all got their own houses. Keep going. Because, you know, mine's a little house. It can't catch hold no more. Y'all getting all these 2,000 square feet things. I ain't never had that much room. They got some nice ones. I'm, I'm thankful. Why? Because I want them to be better than me and my wife had was. I want them to be able to take their children to Disney World where I couldn't take them to Disney World. Right? But they got better jobs than I had, too. They got a better education than I had. They all got bachelors and one's almost having a doctor's degree if he didn't Stop it, didn't he? You stopped, laid out? Stopped it? Oh, a doctor, he's working on his doctor degree in that. The other one's got their bachelor's degree. The husband's got their bachelor's degree. Praise God. If I made the money Brandon made some, me and Chris probably said, oh, I thank God I married you. <laughs> but she knew when we go dating, digging in the chains, trying to buy a hamburger, she knows she that man broke. It had to be love because I didn't have the looks or the money. So, <laughs> so I, I, I'm blessed, brother. I'm blessed. Thank you, Lord. All right. So spend time. Number five, spend time with your children. Spend time with your family. And don't let it be just empty time. I got to get back to her. her. Yeah, hit it. Yeah, all right, bye. Sit and listen. Watch them grow. And here, listen to them. Listen to them. 
Because sometimes when a kid gets on drugs or anything like that, they're really crying out to you. Oh, I got to have attention. I got to need something. Not all the time. There's exceptions to every rule. But they're crying out. Listen to them. Spend time with them. Proverbs 3, verse 3 through 4. You can find that in Deuteronomy 6 through 9 too. But it says, in, in, but we're going to just skip ahead to this one. Never let loyalty and kindness leave you. Tie them around your neck as a reminder. Write them deep into your heart. Then you will find favor with both God and people, and you will earn a good reputation. If you take, let your children see you make mistakes and say, I'm sorry, and tell your wives you're sorry or your companion that you're sorry that you made them, let them see dad ain't perfect all the time, but yet dad allow God to show them how to fix things. That helps them in life how when they make a mistake, they don't know how to take it because daddy was perfect. And I, I just can't go tell daddy what I did because he's perfect. And no. They could come up and say, Dad, I messed up. Yeah? What is it, son? What happened, daughter? Yeah, I understand. You've seen Daddy mess up a few times. They'll, they'll come back to be able to open to you without turning over to something else or turning to something else. So spend time with your children. Number six, and do what you say. Put your money where your mouth is. Woo, the kids, grandkid says, woo, preach it, pastor. <laughs> no, I ain't just talking about put your money where your mouth is. I mean, do what you say. Do what you say. If you're going to say, I'm going to take you fishing or whatever, you make a way. You might have changed the date on it, but bless God, after a while, after three weeks, two months, let's go fishing. Let's make a day. Instead of keep putting it off. Do what you say. If I tell you that you're not going to drive the car for a week, you're not driving it for a week. Unless an emergency or something. An emergency is because Judy ain't going to see you and it ain't an emergency. <laughs> or whatever. You're not driving it. Do what you say. Because the Bible even say James 1 verse 22. James 1 verse 22. But don't just listen to God's word. You must do what it says. Otherwise, you're fooling yourself. As God said in his word, don't only be listeners of words, but doer of the word. Don't only just listen of your children. Do what you said, what you was going to be with the children. Don't just say, I'm going to beat the beep out of you. Don't use those kind of words. If it's a spanking, you're going to spank you when you get home. Huh. One of mine didn't set up. Said, at home, you don't wait till we get out of the store. <laughs> In the parking lot. They're going to carry you to jail. <laughs> Woo! Let me finish this. I like to go on a good rabbit trail, Barbara. <laughs> Number seven, do not, as being a good father, don't provoke your children. That word provoke means to stir up or arouse. That does not mean that, well, I'm going to arouse him when I tell him he ain't going to be able to go to the pate because he ain't got no key or whatever. No, he ain't talking about that kind of rouse, meaning don't rouse him up how and how, telling him how stupid he is or she is. Don't provoke them. Don't tell them how stupid they are and acting the way they act all the time. Don't keep telling them how many mistakes they made. That's what the word, that word means. Don't provoke your children. Ephesians 6, verse 4. And don't talk about your kids with another about another kid. If they have siblings, you do not sit there. Why can't you be like your sister? You're so perfect. You just a blah, 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 blah. That's 
That ain't the love of the father, a father. Because God says, I have no respected person. I love all the same. Tim might be standing up here preaching. I'm using his body as a living sacrifice. But I love that drunk that's laying up under that bridge this morning. Amen. Just the same. Because yeah. that's my son too. Yeah. If he'll realize it. Yeah. Get the picture? Amen. Right? Yeah. You get the picture? That's the true father's love. Yeah, she may be doing right. She may be doing something, but I'm looking at you. This is between me and you. And I'm here to help you to get your abilities out to do right while you do your part by me teaching you. But I'm not saying you better than him and him better than you. You do not bring your children up that way. Every one of them the same. You do not talk about your siblings with one of the other siblings. Well, do you know, Tommy, they did something. My kids can tell you, I don't want to hear it. Every one of them is on the same page. That's why if none of them come and say happy Father's Day or call me on the telephone ever again, there will be, if the Lord bless me with inheritance, there will be an inheritance sitting here waiting on you. If I never see you from this day forth, it's always there. That's the way the Heavenly Father is. It's always there for you to come and get it. It's always there. So don't provoke your children. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger by the way you treat them. Rather, bring them up with the discipline and instruction that comes from the Lord. God knows how to be your father. So I can't be a father unless I have a relationship with that father. Period. He's the true father. He's the true teacher. Well, you don't know what my father did to me. He beat me and I'm going to beat the hell out of mine. Y'all don't know what that was, chew tobacco. Wait a minute. Learn from your other father's mistake. Just because your father beat your, mo her, your mama don't mean you beat your wife. Just because your father that you've seen that didn't provide for your family doesn't mean you don't, can't have a relationship. Oh, how about the Holy Ghost right there? You don't mean you can't have a relationship to be the provider of your family. Break the curse with you. In Jesus' name. You be the one that starts the new generation. Hallelujah. Quit passing the buck on because my dad wasn't this and my dad wasn't that. Children, you be the better dad. Moving right along. The last one. Understand, as I was said before, dads never give up on their kids. I don't care where they've been. I don't care what they did. I don't care what the, you might see where they're going. By the Holy Ghost of the living God, you do not, by, if your child, this is for people that really knows God. Now the world, some of y'all got a problem. If you don't know Jesus, that's, hey, you do the best you can. But I know the tr true fathers, the father of fathers. And with that father, I know there's a way that they will come back home. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I know. Yeah. So I'm never going to give up on my children. Now I'm going to tell them they was wrong and I'm going to visit them in prison. But I'm never going to give up on them. Hallelujah. Because your heavenly father never gives up on you. He, he loves you all the way to hell. And do you know what? He don't stop loving then, but he's tied to his word. I can't come and get you, Bo. You made your choice in hell. But it grieved. It, I wish the Holy Spirit, yes, Lord. I pray that people will have the Holy Spirit to show them how the Father really feels when he, a soul goes to hell. It grieves the Father for many, 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 many. I can't express the words of the people he lost. That's why he hates to lose anybody. He says, my will for no one to perish, but I'll come to repentance. Think about that. Dad never gives up. 
by praying. Don't give up on your kids by praying and speaking the word of God. Just like the story of the prodigal, prodigal son. Luke 15 verse 20 through 24. A father's job never stops. It comes into being a grandfather. Guess what? You got another job, granddad. You got another job, grandpa. Whoever you want them to call. Some people get offended because I don't want to be called granddaddy. I'm too young. Man, you call me Grandpa, Paul, PP, don't matter to me. Because I know who I am. <laughs> My daughter and them says, him and them says go, go to Mimi and PP. Paul, Paul. So Mimi won't be Mimi. <laughs> but a father's job never is up. Always have your grandfather. So what happened? So he returned to his father, and while he was still a long way, his father saw him coming, filled with love and compassion. He ran to his son, embraced him, and kissed him. His son said to him, Father, I have sinned against you, both heaven and you, and I am no longer worthy of being called your son. Oh, how to get me happy around here. But his father said to the servants, quick, bring the fi finest robe into the house. Put on him. Get a ring for his finger, sandals for his feet, and kill the calf. We have been fatting. We must celebrate with a feast. For this son of mine was dead and has now returned to life. Hallelujah. He was lost, but now he's found. So the party begins. Somebody need a shout. That's what gets me happy when I see my children coming to the Lord and staying with the Lord. And I'm going to get even happier when I see them grandchildren up here preaching and prophesying. Oh, get out of my way. Get out of my way. Because I know how hard the devil tries to bring them out there and draw them out to kill them. But to be able to have them in the house, that's a joy. And then you got to know how the enemy can steal them right back if they allow them. That's why I stay in the good fight of faith. Keep on the fighting. Father, keep them every day. Every, they may be in church, but every day, Father, keep them. You know what the future holds. You know what can happen to make their mind get all shook up. Oh, Lord, let them know how to what to watch and not to watch or hear on the news or whatever it may be. Stand to your feet. So fathers, we wish you a happy Father's Day.